You know the story the next day, it says in chapter 12, Pharaoh rose up in the middle of the night. All his servants, verse 30 of chapter 12, all the Egyptians, there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where one was not dead. How does it relate to Jesus? We're going to get into that when we get into the New Testament. Uh, do you want me to give you just a little hint now? For you watching the video, a little hint? Okay. Jesus is the Passover lamb. He is the Paschal lamb. He is the fulfillment of this. You know that when he came on the scene, in the, full, in the fullness of time, John the Baptist looked at him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Do you remember when Jesus came riding into Jerusalem on a donkey? Well, during this time of the first century, or the, the, the time of Christ, they were commanded to celebrate the Passover every year. But they have a problem. There's been a diaspora. There are Jews everywhere. And they have to come to Jerusalem to the permanent temple to sacrifice. Well, if you bring a little lamb behind you for 1,000 miles or 400 miles, that lamb is not going to look too good by the time it gets to Jerusalem. So during the time of the prophets, they developed what they called the sacrificial flock outside Jerusalem. And people would raise sacrificial flocks, bring them to Jerusalem before the Passover. People would travel to Jerusalem, buy a lamb. On the 10th day of Nisan, they would typically buy it and inspect it until the 14th day of Nisan. Then at 14th day of Nisan, at twilight, they would sacrifice the lamb, eat it as a family, celebrate the Lord's Passover. Palm Sunday. At the same time that the sacrificial flock is being brought into Jerusalem, the Lamb of God is being brought into Jerusalem. Palm Sunday is the 10th of Nisan. And for the next three days, Jesus is inspected by everybody. And finally, on the 14th of Nisan, what happens? He stands before Pilate, and Pilate says, I find no fault in him. And at twilight, at three, he is sacrificed. The Lamb of God for the sins of the world. We'll get more into that, but you can see how the two relate to each other. Chapter 13, the Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me all the firstborn. Consecrate to me all the firstborn. Whatever is the first to open the womb among the people of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. The firstborn were consecrated to the Lord. In verse 15, For when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of cattle. Therefore I, I sacrifice to the Lord all the males that first opened the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. And so the firstborn sons will be redeemed. Verse 17, when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not let, led them, lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, which is modern day the Gaza Strip. It's the Gaza Strip. This is now where they're going to begin moving out. And, uh, and uh, he says that he didn't take them right up to the land, which is the obvious choice, right? What are we looking for? Land, royal dynasty, worldwide blessing. Land would be the first choice. Let's go up in the land. We're only about a couple of days, a few days away from going up there. No, Pharaoh let the people go. God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near, for God said, and this is important, lest the people repent or turn around when they see war and return to Egypt. So why did God not let them go right up into the land? Very simple. They were young as a nation. They were ill-prepared spiritually, babes. And here's the bottom line. They couldn't handle conflict. They couldn't handle a battle. They couldn't handle difficult times. When difficult times hit, you know what they would want to do? Go back to Egypt. Whoa, is this in our lives or what? How about us wanting all that God has for us and thinking, Lord, if you were God, you could do this just like now. And he said, yes, I could, but you're not prepared. You're not prepared. You can't handle conflict. You can't handle the truth. You can't handle conflict. You can't handle warfare. And you're going to run right back to Egypt. In fact, they try to do it several times. Like, we want to go back to Egypt. We can't handle it.